we are going to go through a problem that appeared on the IMO, or the International Mathematical Olympiad, this year. This was problem number five, which means that it's of medium difficulty for this contest. So let's hear the problem. Two squirrels, Bushi and Juppi, have collected 2021 walnuts for the winter. Juppi numbers the walnuts from 1 through 2021 and digs 2021 holes in a circular pattern around their favorite tree. The next morning, Juppi notices that Bushi had placed one walnut into each hole but had paid no attention to the numbering. Unhappy, Juppi decides to reorder the walnuts by performing a sequence of 2021 moves. In the kth move, Juppi swaps the position of the two walnuts adjacent to walnut K. Prove that there exists a value of K such that on the kth move, Jumpy swaps some walnuts A and B such that A is less than K is less than B. Now feel free to pause this video here to ponder this problem yourself. A good way to start this problem is by drawing up some arrangement of walnuts, but maybe have them a bit fewer than 2021, and just start to see what happens when we go through these actions. You may notice that for some numbers of walnuts, um, you may be able to build an example where Jumpy goes through this sequence without swapping a larger and smaller walnut. See here, here's an example with uh, 10 walnuts. And Jumpy goes through this entire sequence without ever swapping a smaller and larger walnut. You notice how here uh, we place the five numbers that are smallest, so one, two, three, four, five, in every other place. And then the larger five are in every other place after that might be something uh, to do with what the number of walnuts is. So maybe it has something to do with the parity of the number. So to make some progress in this problem, we somehow want to simplify the information that we have into only the info that is important to us. So looking again at the statement, that there's a k such that a is smaller than k is smaller than b, the exact values of a and b do not matter to us. The only thing we want to know is that a is smaller than k, b is larger than k, so how they are relative to k is the only important piece of info. So maybe we should think of all the nuts other than nut k as belonging to two different categories. So one category is all nuts that have a number that is smaller than k, and one category is all nuts that have a number larger than k. We can indicate these categories maybe by color. So let all the green nuts be those that have a number smaller than k, and then the rest of them, the white nuts, uh, must have a number larger than k. With this approach, we can change the problem statement from finding a k where we are swapping walnuts with a smaller and larger number into that we have to prove that there exists a walnut where at that walnut we are swapping a green and a white walnut or a colored or uncolored walnut. Say that we've done this coloring um, at nut number k then after Jumpy has uh, sw swapped K's neighbors and moves on to walnut number K plus one, then we want to have all nuts with numbers smaller than K plus one green. But these are all the numbers that were smaller than K, as well as K itself. So in effect, in every move, Jumpy is just swapping and then coloring the nut that was in the middle. So, in the beginning, everything is white, because nothing is smaller than, than 1. Then after we have swapped 1's neighbors, we color number 1. 
Then we move on to four, swap it and color it and so forth. When we are here swapping two green walnuts, it means that they've already had their turn. So they must be smaller. And here, if both are white, then it means it hasn't been their turn yet. So they must be larger than K. Now, when we get to K equals six and swap three and seven, we are swapping uh, a white and a green nut. So if we say that this process terminates when Jumpy gets to the first triple with one smaller and one larger, so one white and one green neighbor, everything that comes before it must be a different kind of move. So only swapping green walnuts or only swapping white walnuts. Um, so then these moves that come before um, this first swap with one green and one white doesn't change the coloring. We might as well just not be swapping the nuts at all. Then this problem just becomes um, that we are supposed to prove that if Jumpy wants to color all 2021 walnuts, he must at some point color a walnut with one colored and one uncolored neighbor. An easier way to think about this is just the question, can Jumpy color 2021 walnuts by only coloring in between two colored or two uncolored walnuts? Now, we may know the answer to this question beforehand, since this problem probably isn't um, lying to us. But a squirrel's got to try. In the case of 2021 walnuts, Jumpy has to start somewhere. Since Jumpy is trying to color all the nuts without coloring a nut with different neighbors, um, any of the nuts that are left are possible for that except exactly the ones that are adjacent to the one that he colored first. The second nut that he colors splits the circle into two non-empty arcs. Say that one of them has length A and the other one has length B, where I mean by length the number of walnuts on that arc. Since there are 2021 nuts in total, the nuts left uncolored are these 2021 minus those two that we have already colored, um, so 2019. And this is split into these two arcs, so A plus B equals 2019. That means that either A or B must be odd and the other must be even. Since if we were summing two odd numbers or two even numbers, their sum would be an even number. So let's say that B is the even one. So for the odd arc A, Jumpy can actually fill in this entire arc um, and you can do this with a similar pattern as we saw for the 10 walnuts before. So if he starts by coloring first every other nut uh, and then filling in the gaps, then first he is only swapping nuts with two white neighbors and then he is only swapping nuts with two colored neighbors. So that's why we don't have to care about this odd arc anymore because we know Jumpy can color it. So we only need to focus on this arc B to see if Jumpy can color it. Since Jumpy wants to color all the walnuts, he must at some point color a walnut on this arc B. When Jumpy colors the first walnut on this arc, he splits it into two smaller arcs. Let's call them A1 and B1. Their combined length is b minus one because the original arc was of length b and we have just colored one on it and since we assumed b to be even then b minus one is odd and so either one of a1 or b1 must be odd let's say it's b1 now we know that jumpy can color this odd arc a1 so we only need to worry about the even arc b1 Eventually, Jumpy will have to color a walnut on this arc B1 and again splits it into two arcs and one of them is of even length. And now we just iterate this process 
and it always yields a smaller and smaller non-empty arc of even length. And we can continue to do this until we cannot go any further. And that is when we get to an arc of length 2. When Jumpy gets to this arc of length 2, Jumpy cannot color either one of these final two white, uh, white nuts without coloring one nut with one white and one green neighbor. It's exactly this nut K with neighbors A and B, where A is smaller than K and B is larger than K. And this is what the problem was to find. And now that is what we have shown. So now we have solved a problem that appeared on the International Mathematics Olympiad this year.